These pictures I'm showing you now were shot on the Canon 5D Mark II and the 6D Mark I. And in this video, I'm gonna discuss which camera I think is better for portraiture and under which conditions. But if you want to learn how to edit like this, save yourself loads of time fiddling around in Photoshop and Lightroom, then check out my online portrait photography editing workshop now and you can start learning the techniques that I use to edit my portraits like this. It's in the description down below. So one of the most common questions I keep getting asked is, which camera should I pick, the 6D Mark I or the 5D Mark II? So firstly, the 6D is a more modern camera. It has better ergonomics for most people. It has an SD card slot instead of CF, which is more practical for most people. And the focusing system, at least the center focus point, is better. But it is largely, other than that, the same focusing system. It does have a couple more focus points, but it, it's such a minor change that it's that's irrelevant. But the center focus point on the 6D works really well in low light. It uses the same batteries as the 5D Mark II, and it has a slightly better screen on the back of it. But I wouldn't let that sway you between the two cameras. To me, I almost think of these two cameras as variations of each other, with the 6D being the slightly more modern version. What the 5D Mark II, though, offers instead is the joystick on the back. You get that, and you get a slightly larger camera body. But I do think the ergonomics are still a little bit better on the 6D. But over Overall, these are minor differences between the two cameras. They share a lot of the same basic features and most of it doesn't amount to enough to be a big difference. Where the real difference does come in though is I suppose in the images they produce. And I've been really trying to think about how I can best describe the differences between them and who they're best for. And then I thought to myself, what have I enjoyed shooting with them the most? What kind of scenarios would I use them in? So I will talk a little bit about the kinds of portrait photography that I think each of these cameras is potentially better for. But I will also state that you won't go wrong with either of them, I think they're very nice. But they do have a slightly different rendering from them. I find that the 5D Mark II has a sort of a more punchy look. So colour palettes aside, I just feel like the 5D Mark II always gives me a little bit more punch. It looks a little bit more glossy. I think that's probably a good way to describe it. So it has those earthy tones, which I've often spoken about in other videos. It's got a nice earthy look to it. It's a nice colour palette on its own. Like dark hair looks really rich and, and glossy. And I think because of its lower dynamic range, it takes to a sort of a punchier look where the, the blacks are a little bit more crushed and the highlights are peaking a little bit more early. But that has its own advantages and people don't always think of a more limited dynamic range as having any advantages, but it can give you a more of a, a, a contrasty look straight out of camera. Conversely, I feel like the 6D lends itself more to a softer look. Um, it probably lends itself a little bit better to a more fine art look because of the increased dynamic range on it. I feel that the files look a bit smoother. The transitions, the gradations are smoother as well. So anytime you want to go for more of that fine art style, I think that it suits that a little bit better. The 5D Mark II is going to give you a slightly punchier look and you're going to get more out of the overcast days or slightly poor lighting conditions. I also think the 5D Mark II does better in those sunset, really good lighting conditions. It just, I feel like it's color palette, which is kind of unique I think it's fairly unique within the Canon system. Just gives it a little bit of something extra that the 6D doesn't quite have. However, if you're in a studio situation where you perhaps want to do quite a bit of cropping, although they have similar megapixel counts, I just feel like the 6D handles it better. And I think that's to do with the sensor, the way the files are, the way they hold up. They just, they seem to deal with it a lot better. That's just been my experience with it. If I had to pick, I think that the 5D Mark II is perhaps better as an outdoor portrait camera because it's going to give you that slightly punchier, glossier look. And I just like what it does. And I feel that for studio photographers, the 6D is better because you can do more with the files. You can push them around a bit more. And it just, the, the files, when I'm looking at them, I looked at some again recently and I just thought, yes, the 6D files to me look better from the studio. I just prefer the way that that's working. And then outdoors, I just lean slightly more towards the 5D Mark II. What can I say in the end with these two cameras? Is it as simple as get the 5D Mark II if you shoot outdoors and get the 6D if you shoot in the studio? I don't think it's quite as simple as that because the 6D has this slightly more creamy, yellowy look and the 5D 
Mark II has this earthy but more glossy, slightly more punchy kind of look. Whilst you can do a lot with the files in Ed Singh and you can manipulate them around, it definitely helps if you're in the right ballpark of what you want to get in the first place. So I try and study pictures online that have been shot with both cameras and start thinking to yourself, are you drawn more towards one look or the other? Because realistically, if you just said you can only have one of these cameras and you have to shoot all portraits on it, I wouldn't really care too much which one you gave me. It just wouldn't really bother me. And sometimes I feel like I almost lean slightly towards the 5D Mark II only for the fact that it has that kind of slightly unique look. And I have the 5D Mark I, which gives me a lot of what the 6D has as well. So, but then the 6D is that more modern camera. They're both very good, so it's very hard to say. But my ultimate advice to you is if you feel drawn more towards one than the other. Just go for that one because you'll be okay. Because a lot of what these two cameras offer is very similar. And I think you should spend some time looking on websites like Flickr. And well, there's not very much good photography on there, but if you start looking through online and trying to find pictures, then you can start to see the difference. But when you're looking online, here's the thing that I would say to you. And I have a few people message me about this as well is that sometimes they can't see the difference between certain cameras. Here's the thing, you'll only start to see the differences between sensors that come out quite strongly in good lighting, right? And in your editing. So it's the way the files handle afterwards. The problem is with, with sites like Flickr, for example, when you go on there and you look at things, is that most people are just taking pictures in the middle of the day. And in the middle of the day, all cameras will just look the same. You, even an iPhone will look like a DSLR pretty much. There's not going to be that much in it until you start controlling the lights, until you start... A lot of the people that have those these cameras don't know what they're doing, so they're not able to see the lighting that's around them. They're just pressing a button and, and taking a picture. There, there's more to it than that. As soon as you start using it and looking at the lighting that you're using, the angles that you're taking the picture at, and how the light is interacting with that, then you start to see the differences when you do that. And that kind of makes sense because if I told you to drive a Ferrari in first gear at five miles an hour, your experience of it is not going to be much different from any other car driving along at five miles an hour. Does that make sense? That's kind of like what shooting in midday with no intention, paying no attention to the lighting whatsoever, that's what that gives you. And that's unfortunately what most of websites like Flickr are. It's a bunch of people that have no idea what they're doing. So everything does look the same. You have to, you know, it's the same thing with the car analogy. You have to floor it and start taking it around bends and start doing something with it. You have to give it something to work with before you start seeing these differences. So you, like I said, you'll see that in the editing and you'll see that once you start using good lighting, when you start paying attention to the lighting that's around you that's when you start to see these differences really start to come out. And so, yeah, look around, try and find as much work as you can and, and try to decide between the two. But that would be my feeling. I, I lean more towards the 5D Mark II for outdoor stuff and I lean more towards the 6D for studio-based stuff. But I'm happy with either in either condition. And I think that if you've got one and you're looking at the other, just don't bother, just stop, because both of them are fantastic cameras. And I don't think you gain anything by switching or, or thinking, oh, maybe I should have got the other one instead. I can imagine a lot of 5D Mark II owners, oh, should I have got the 6D Mark I? No, they're so similar, don't bother. They do look different, but they both look really good in their own way. And if I had to grade the images out of, out of the two of them, I'd say the 6D is easier to work with in a professional setting because of the increased dynamic range and just the overall file quality is better. But in terms of what I could produce when I'm in control under the sort of conditions I like to work in, there's nothing in it. So I wouldn't really worry about it. Anyway, I hope that made things clearer. I bet it didn't. <laughs> so don't forget to check out my online workshop. The link is in the description down below. If you've got any questions or comments, leave them down below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed that and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will see you again in the next video. Take care, bye-bye.